Well, hello everyone. Welcome to the official Plate Up Intermediate Guide. I am the Ontario Gardener. I am a member of the Discord since February, been a support member, and I'm also a moderator over there, so I'm sure you see my name floating about. I also have content on Twitch as well as YouTube under the same name, the Ontario Gardener. Now, in the Intermediate Guide today, what we're going to be talking about is different dishes and about layouts, and we're going to jump into a game that's a little bit more progressed than the basic, what you watch in the basic guide. I'm going to talk a little bit about customer cards, what they do, why serving over the counter versus not is a good idea or a bad idea, getting in, get into a little bit of intermediate aut automation, nothing too crazy, but stuff that would be very, very handy, especially if you are a solo player. And then as well as certain appliances and some of them cycle, some of them don't. We'll be talking about a little bit of that as well as rounding it off with some themes about which one each does. And then as you go through that, there'll be pop-ups on the screen about different ones as I'm talking about them. So you could pause the video and you could read what the descriptions are as well as getting any information you need from the plate up wiki which uh, you can just go over to google there or it'll be in the description below okay without further ado say you played a few runs you may be level six maybe level 12 you know you want to play some different dishes you want to get a bit more advanced well down here there's a couple advanced dishes now breakfast which is your toast start with toast that unlocks at level 13 and you have your stir fry which is Arguably one of the most intimidating dishes because of the amount of work that's involved. However, it does bring in the most money. I believe it's 10 coins without any modifications per stir fry dish. That can really add up. And then we have fish, of course. And then if you ever want to refresh the ones that you have here, you go up into this tutorial here, this little question mark, right? And you enter the tutorial, you go to exit, you exit right back out, and these may be refreshed. They could be the same ones. That's how you also refresh your layouts. Now, again, you have, depending on what your level is, you'll have a different amount of layouts here. And then, obviously, your daily and weeklies unlock. I believe at level six, currently, they're, the time of recording this video, they're using the autumn maps because we're still within the turkey day update. So what we're going to do is we're just going to pick breakfast because it's one of my one of my favorite dishes because it is you can automate it in various stages eventually getting up to automating it completely as far as cooking the toast, chopping it up, portioning it, cooking it again, putting it into a prep position. So it's very good, especially when we get things like beans and different toppings. So what we're going to do is we're going to jump right into a game and I'll come right back. So before we pop into the game, I wanted to discuss a couple dishes, some of my favorite ones and the reason why I would choose one over the other. Now, what we're going to be playing today, as I said earlier in the video, is we're going to be doing breakfast. Breakfast is your main. There's no increase or reduction in customer amounts with breakfast. Similarly to pizza, which also doesn't have a reduction or an increase in customers. But again, I never play it based on that because I like to play the dish that I want to play. Now, if you're playing solo, a lot of times you want to try to focus on automation. Things like breakfast is easy to automate. Things like pies are easy to automate. Things like burgers are super easy. Burgers and hot dogs are the easiest thing to automate. All you need are two grabbers or smart grabbers, two grabbers and one combiner and then some sort of hob. That's all you need to automate burgers or hot dogs. However, hot dogs come with the added ketchup and mustard, which I don't care for myself. Burgers, I do. I'm looking for a really fast paced run where I'm serving maybe 80, 90 customers by the time I franchise. I'd go with burgers if I want more of a relaxed run. I'd go with something like stir fry because stir fry has a 15% reduction in customers and you know, you get a lot more money per dish, but there's a lot more involved. You have your rice, you have broccoli that has to be chopped, you have carrots that have to be chopped. If you get the meat one, meat that has to be chopped, you have to cook each one individually on a hob or, or well, I guess you could use an oven as well on a wok and then you got transferred to a plate. So it's a lot more involved, but again, the, tr the, the, the upside of that is you have more money. Things like pies, all you need is a couple mix, well, basically one mixer, a few grabbers, and you have pie crust automated, a couple of safety hobs, and, and a couple of combiners. You could have meat pies 100% combined and 100% automated. Pretty good. Pizza is a bit trickier to automate because of the various stages to make the dough, to make the sauce, etc. Um, and then if you just have red and blue fish, it's one of the easiest dishes to automate. All you need is two grabbers and two hobs basically or two safety hobs and because the fish dishes switch around each time you want to make sure you're not using smart grabbers or really prep frozen prep stations for fish because in your automation setups things will break if you start using smart grabbers now one thing in, you're looking at here and you say okay well why is burgers 30 percent more well because it's so easy to do burgers is basically a burger that cooks super fast on any appliance topped with a roll or a bun in this case 
and you serve it. It's super fast, super easy. It's one of the simplest dishes that you have. It's basically cook it, bun it, serve it, done. But again, that's a 30% increase. So if you choose burgers, especially if you're playing with a larger group, you could have 90 customers easy, 80, 90 customers, especially if you have individual dining, by the time you hit franchise or maybe OT day three or four or five. But I've had runs where I've had customers in the hundreds at OT day 10 because I chose no food carts to reduce that. But again, these are my favorites ones to do depending on how I want to do it. If I want to have a nice relaxing run, I'd maybe do something like a stir fry or like a pie as long as I get a little bit of automation. Breakfast the same way. Fish is a no-brainer. You know, oysters are done pretty easily. Fillets, but you have spiny fish and crab cake, which those take a bit more time. Pizza is pretty easy. The thing is with pizza is you have pizza, the cheese pizza, you have the mushroom, and you have the onion. None of them reduce customers because you're not really adding that much difficult. You're adding one more ingredient, but you're still getting the same amount of portions really for the same amount of work plus maybe 5% extra work. So you'll get no reduction with customers there, but it's also fun to do. Have pizza being made. I love pizza. Let's head back to the game. Alrighty, so this is a bit more of an advanced layout compared to what you saw in the basic video. Uh, when I'm playing solo, I always try to find a map that has a large pass-through or large window like you see here. That way you can put at least three or four, two, three, four tables. Now this is an inter intermediate size map. This is in between the small maps and the diner maps and then also the large maps which are 12 by 16. These I believe are a little bit shorter than that, maybe 10 by something like that. I'm not exactly sure what it is, but they're slightly smaller. But I have it laid out here a bit different than what you'd think. You're like, okay, well, the flower's here, the phone's here, there's no flower. Like, what are you doing? Well, you're doing breakfast, remember. And I always look at my expected group count and my group sizes. So if you take the maximum amount of groups, which is going to be three, plus the maximum or times the maximum amount of group sizes is six. One loaf of bread gives you 10 portions. And I also have three groups, so that's three tables. So what I can do, we're going to start right away here, is I only need one one loaf of bread. So I'm going to get my bread going in, and I'm going to call everybody. I missed out on one, one call there, two, three. Because no matter how many times I ring, you're only going to get as many customers as what the groups say. And because the way it's set up, and I'm doing corner grabbing as well, which is a little bit more of an intermediate technique. Again, some people are very good at corner grabbing. Some people are not. And I'm just basically showing you how quickly you can go through a day. Always clean your messes as always. A good tip that I always have is serve your individual customers first because that they'll be in and out faster and there's only one dish to clear for the table. And as you see here, we're moving through this day pretty quickly and we're using an oven. Ovens don't create mess. They work at two X speed and there we go. First day done in about 25 seconds, maybe a minute uh, at the most. And there you go. That's one day. I'm gonna I'm gonna skip well ahead here, but I just want to show you that setting up this way it may not make any sense. But again, look at our group count now. And now we have four groups. Still, group sizes one to two. So that means we still only need one loaf of bread. So there's no reason to keep the the flour up here because we're only gonna be using it one time per day. It's once you start getting into eleven plus, then you might want to think about moving the flour or rearranging this a bit differently. Now, what we'll do is let's just check out our drops right away and see if we got anything good. It says excellent eats. And here we have our typical. This is a great this is a great setup because what we do here is we'll buy a blueprint cabinet and then we'll stick the research desk in the cabinet as well as well. Here's is where you could make your own decision. I personally would go for a hob because I like safety hobs for breakfast. Now, they're not quick. They're only 0.75 speed, but they don't burn. And all you really need is a little bit more of automation, which we're going to get into momentarily. And then I'll show you exactly how that works. But then again, you say, okay, maybe a better sink because you only have four plates, another dining table to put push back messes. But for me, I would put the hob in here and I would buy a dining table. And the reason why is because as you saw there in the beginning, I had a couple messes that spawned inside. A mess will spawn without any sort of issue. Customer cards, a mess will spawn within one tile of a chair. So theoretically, this can't spawn here because there's this, this here, but this chair can spawn here. This chair can spawn in here as far as a mess. So if you back the tables up a little bit, just by basically doing this and that, again, remember the last table place that has the numbers on it, that's going to be where your dirty dishes are going to spawn. So let's jump ahead a few days. And let's see if we have gathered any automation to show you just how breakfast can be automated. 
All right, we'll take a quick little break from the episode and we'll talk about the different table types. Now, the table on your left is your basic dining table. Seats four combines with other like tables. No benefits to that, no reductions, your basic table. The next one in the top part of the screen, which is the purple one, is the fancy tablecloth. Now, the fancy tablecloth seats four and it does combine with like tables. And which turns two or more into one big long table. The beauty with the fancy tablecloth is it gives you 50% more money per dish per customer, which can be very, very powerful if you have a starter, a main, side, dessert. You're making 50% extra money for every customer that you serve. The one to the right of that is the simple tablecloth. That has become quite popular these days because it is quite powerful. They don't combine with like tables. You can place them next to each other they don't combine into one long table and the beauty of that is you only have to serve one dish if you have two people sitting there you only they'll order the same thing you sold you serve one dish that's one food you have to make and then they also only produce one dirty dish now the negatives with that is that it has a 200 percent thinking time so twice as long than any other table so that's a bit of a pain if you're trying to go fast the second negative with that is that they actually have to sit across from each other the customers can only sit across from each other and you can only use it in group sizes of one to two a few group sizes three or more you can't use these because you can only ever fit two chairs chairs at it. But it can be outweighed again with only having to serve one dish, which can be quite powerful. If you have a lot of sides, a lot of mains, a lot of different dishes, combinations, you serve one per two people. Now the one on the bottom is the metal table. The metal table used to be the gold standard for tables because they never used to combine and they only had a 25% reduction in patients. Now that's been changed. They now have a 50% reduction in patients, and they do combine with each other. So if you have a row of 10 of them, you, they will combine into one table. So it lost a bit of a bit of power there, and the 50% is bad too, well, worse than it was. But the beauty of metal tables is you do not have to serve sides. They'll order sides, and you can serve them the sides, and they'll pay for the sides, but you don't have to actually serve sides. So if you have a long run, you say you have three or four different side dishes, have all metal tables then you can tuck all those materials away to the side all the items and you don't have to serve any sides now again this doesn't have anything to do with starters mains or desserts you always have to serve a main you always have to serve a starter you always have to serve a dessert if they order it this is for sides only but it still can be quite powerful depending on what side dishes you have now the next one is the bottom right which is a bar table there is no thinking phase which is quite handy. They don't combine with anybody else, any other table or themselves, which is handy as well. You can't use table consumables on them, but you, so you can't put things like napkins or breadsticks or candles on them. So that's a bit of a drawback and they only are one seater. So if you have individual dining, bar tables are great. You can line 10 of them up, serve 10 people at one time. They don't combine. But if you have group size of one to two, you're going to be re reduced to about 50% usage because just Based on mathematics there, 50% of the customers will come in in groups of two, 50% will be coming in groups of one. Of course, it's not exactly like that. I'm just, just going off of averages here. So it's a very powerful table, and it's very, very cheap compared to the other ones. All the other, the, the basic dining table costs 20, the fancy, the simple, and the metal all cost 60, and the bar table costs significantly less at only five coins. But again, when you upgrade tables, they don't cycle through one another. So you have to get the one that you get, and then you have to research another one to get a different one. All right, let's back to the game. All righty, and we're back. So I played through a bunch, gathered some materials here, some items, some basic automation, a little intermediate automation. We'll go through the second. We're up to day 13. So I wanted to bring you back and um, bring you back for the last little segment here. And these are the cards we have left. We either have discount, 20% less money, which is never great. We have a decent amount of money here because we haven't been buying that much. We got a lot of stuff early on, and then um, we kind of we kind of cooled off with buying things right away. Um, I also should tell you the different cards that we have as far as exclusive, why we have more money, etc. So, All right, let's take another quick break here, and let's talk about the different type of decoration cards. You have exclusive, affordable, charming, and formal. Now, I'm always a fan of exclusive because it has increased queue patience, the queues outside stop table patience decreasing, and then you have extra money delivered. Now, extra money delivered can be good in any scenario. If you have a lot of customers, this is a good card also for that because of the queue patience outside, and if you have a queue outside as well, the table patience inside, whether it be the coffee table or regular table, the patience stops until 
that someone comes in, which is very, very powerful. Affordable is one of these ones. Mainly affordable number one, tier one, is the best one. to, to you know Once you get that, you don't typically get the other ones because it decreases their eating and thinking time. And that combined with, say, something like instant ordering, your people are going to be coming in and out super, super fast. You, you give them their plate, boom, they eat it, they're up and gone. So if, again, if you have a lot of customers, you're doing a lot of automation, you want to get customers in and out, you do something like, um, affordable. Now, again, the tier three of that is actually pretty good. So it has the eating time and there's no delivery phase. Now, the delivery phase is a phase from when you place one dish down on a multiple customer table and then they have a timer that ticks down very quickly before the other person gets their food. This basically eliminates that. So you don't have a negative effect when you're, when you're delivering food like that, so which also could be quite powerful if you have large groups. So again, affordable is good if you have a lot of single customers coming in with individual dining, with instant service, in my opinion. But if you have larger groups, the affordable tier three buff is actually pretty good too. You get down to charming. Charming is a pretty pretty standard one. Uh, you've increased bell patience, which is um, one of the patience types from, from when a customer comes in, they're thinking about it, they're taking their order, et cetera, et cetera. They have increased patience there. Uh, the patience decreases slower when players are nearby. Now, again, this card is good if you're having, if you're serving other than diner style. If not, patience level decreasing doesn't do anything. Um, and then customers sit at the table before it's cleared. That's a very powerful one as well. If you have large groups and you ha it takes a while to clear the table, say you have the auto map and you're playing with groups of eight to nine, it takes a long time to clear all of those plates. But if you have charming, the next group will come in, they'll sit down right away. They don't want to wait outside. So those are also patient, uh, pretty powerful as well. And the last one is formal. Formal is all about mess. If you're serving with multiple people in the dining room, you want to go formal because there's decreased mess in general. And then you also have a bonus patience when delivering the food, which is your food delivery phase, the last phase that you have. So again, that's good for someone serving in the dining room. And then the last one is the most powerful, one of the most powerful buffs in the game. Tables create no mess at all. That's zero mess. So if you're going to go formal, it's going to cost quite a bit of money, but you want to try to rush that as quick as possible if you're serving in the dining room because you're going to have zero mess from tables. And that's one of the most powerful buffs that you can have in the entire game. If you're playing multiplayer, if you're playing solo and you're serving diner style, formal is not for you. In my opinion, charming may be for you. Affordable definitely is for you if you if you have a lot of automation and you have a lot of customers to serve. But otherwise, my gold standard is exclusive. Again, you can only choose one of two. You don't get to choose one of four, depending on which one comes up. My ranking would always go for a solo player playing diner style. I go exclusive, affordable, charming, and then formal. Uh, that would be my particular order. All right, let's jump right back into the game. So, meat soup, I think, is what we're going to go for. Like right now, we have toast, just plain toast, no sides. We also have ice cream, and we also can do meat soup. Now, meat soup is a whole different ball game because it requires a meat freezer or the meat refrigerator, an onion, the broth, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But I think we're up to the challenge to do meat soup. And I'm going to go through. See, right now we're making 200 coins a day, which is pretty good. So I want to show you real quick what cards we actually have right now. We have the breakfast card. We have advertising, which is our day three card. 25% more customers. We have exclusive. Now exclusive on the left-hand side of the screen, you can see there the bonuses. In first tier is increased queue patience, which is great. And then the second one is really where you start making extra money. I think it's one or two dollars, or there's I mean, pretty one or two dollars per per dish. That's per ice cream, per starter, per main. No matter what they, you're serving, is an extra coin, one coin per person or two per group for each individual dish. Which I mean, if you're serving thirty dishes in total, that's thirty extra coins for doing basically the same amount of work. Then you also have table queue patient stop decreasing, queues stop table patient decreasing, which I don't have that one yet. I couldn't afford it at the time. Exclusive, and then we have tipping culture. This one is a bit of an iffy card. It doesn't bring your group sizes down at all. Um, basically, as long as you're serving the customers within 50% of their patience bar, you're going to get full price. Otherwise, you get a little bit of reduction, but I haven't really found it to be that big a deal. You have ice cream, which drops your groups by an additional 15%. I love ice cream. It's, the, it's my favorite add-on or my favorite dessert favorite anything of the game i find it so easy to do i'm very quick at it which you'll see in the next day and then we have meat soup which again brings us down another 15 percent so your your food cards your side cards your dessert cards your starter cards they all bring your groups down usually around 15 percent and then your customer cards like this one this one don't do anything for your groups this one here actually gives you 25 percent more customers but with all that we only have eight groups 
we have a lot we have to make some space here because we're definitely out of space so i think we'll try to get that set up real quick and then we'll come right back Alrighty, so we're all set up here i did bring in one of these one of these tables here because i wanted to showcase the different types of tables now you have your ordinary table which is just basically ordinary and then this here is actually a fancy or a simple tablecloth and what this simple tablecloth does is basically the customer shares the food it has longer thinking time so it's not the best for that if you have instant service it helps negate this a little bit but they can they don't combine you can stack them next to each other but again they only can serve them one dish no matter what they order it'll all they'll both order the same thing but you only have to serve them one dish but you'll get paid for both this is for soup this is for your main this is for starters sides desserts anything which is really really powerful again if you're serving solo which again i'm playing solo so i always want to serve kind of diner style like this if you're playing with more than two people or more than one person typically you're going to have a dining room full of tables and what's great about this one is these don't combine so you could literally stack five of these up next to each other serve one dish per table and you'll really help you out with maybe usually about the amount of dishes too which really 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 reduction reduced which is great so there we go so let's going to pop back in here we have a bit of research going here there's not much to research i have a safety hub kind of on back up here i like to always store things so i, I buy things I upgrade them and i store them just for a future but so far this run we haven't needed anything um now again we're going to be researching the copy desk potentially i'm going to leave it though but it goes goes cbd copy blueprint to a discount desk and then back through you have other appliances that do that as well like the sinks the sinks go basic sink and then you can upgrade that to one of the four random ones and then that goes to wash basin dishwasher soaking sink and then to power sink the bins are the same way i don't really use a bin very much i always say pros don't use bins but of course everybody uses a bin here and there they upgrade and they're in a cycle as well same thing with the mixer we haven't needed a mixer for this run but they cycle between the heated mixer the wrap mixer and the conveyor mixer but again we don't have a mixer here we don't really need it so let's get going now remember we do have soup now I have a bit of automation set up. So like for me, this is quite a bit of intermediate automation. So basically what this setup does is you have your full loaf, which you're gonna put on the counter. You could have this pulling from a freezer. This could be like this, mind you, it doesn't matter. I have a freezer to store a fresh loaf. Now again, you could store a pot of soup, which might actually be helpful as well. So whatever you, you can't place an item onto the portioner. It has to be whatever's in front of the portioner, like where the arrows are, that's where it will portion from. So it'll portion out. Go over here to the safety hob and go here from this grabber into the frozen prep. This could be a regular prep station, but I was able to get a frozen prep, so it's that much easier. So the reason why it's set up like this is that means we don't have to, once you make our initial bread loaf, we put it on here and the rest is automated. And again, you can tuck this stuff away. I have a lot of corner grabbing going on here, which is you know pretty much my style. Again, in a pinch, you could grab this conveyor here if you need it. And then again, I'm still using this same basic tight layout here, but let's run through the day. We have one blueprint desk here. We have a bunch of cabinets. We're not gonna do any research today because I don't really wanna upgrade anything at the moment. I wanna sit on it for a little bit. And let's get started with eight groups. So it's not a lot, but it is getting up there. So my rule of thumb with a lot of this stuff is, is played towards your strength. If you want to do all customer cards, then you're going to have a lot more customers. You're going to have a lot more groups. If you take more food cards, it's more work, but you have less customers. And there is a balance in between there. Personally, it depends on the dish, how I want it to go. But again, everybody's going to want a starter. That's a no brainer. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to get, let's see, where's the sink? I'm going to get a loaf going down here. We have a fresh loaf here ready to go i'm actually going to get another pot of soup on because we're probably going to need it one tip is soup does not burn anything in a pot i'm going to take a coffee table coffee tables are great anything in a pot will not burn all right they want two soups that no, takes a longer because they're thinking let's see what do they want they each want a soup but guess what you serve them one soup and that's all you need they're going to want that of course and then they're probably going to want we're going to want toast obviously put it down there and then we're going to buzz through the next one here what do they want ice cream that's a simple ice cream there everybody's gonna want soup in some fashion and there we go there we go there we go it's pretty quick things go pretty quickly what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to dump this one in here because this broth is made already i'm going to put it on the on the safety hob it goes pretty quickly this soup is done again you can see there's a lot more juggling that has to go on we actually have a loaf here ready to go as well we put that into our freezer and then this table is going to want ice cream but they're all going to want the same thing and you just cycle through ice cream again i'm pretty quick with ice cream 
And I said, not everybody wants a soup. Not everybody wants a starter. Now, again, though, I am getting messes. As you can see, I am getting a mess now because this table, this chair is within one tile. So it's a bit of a trade-off, but that's okay. We can do a bit of little ring ringing here, especially since I triple chocolate. Wow. Especially because I locked in a coffee table. We have plenty of extra space here. I like to do ringing as I feel, well, as I feel comfortable ringing. You don't have to ring ring. I do because it's, um, that was a bit of a wonky one there because I feel quite confident in my, in my ability sometimes, but if you're not that confident and that's nothing, it's not a negative. It's just, it's just the way it is. If you're not that confident, then by all means don't ring. You get extra money for it, but, but if that has to sacrifice winning or losing the, 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 the day, Hey, don't ring at all. Don't ring at all. You don't have to. And especially because when, I mean, here's another tip, you know, because we have the coffee tables, right? We actually can ring a lot more than, than we, than we normally would. All right. Unlucky. All right. I think we're going to be good here with soup. We have this and this and this. Now, again, I could put a pot of soup into the freezer here, but I think I'd rather go off of this. And I think what I will do, maybe I will do a little research. Again, you can always plan your researches out depending on when you want to do it. Um, see if we get a better hob. Well, we upgraded to a blueprint desk, which is fine. And then this hob will upgrade it to a danger or a safety hob. Upgraded to a danger hob, which is actually pretty good for us because it makes soup go that much quicker. But again, like I said, if you're using the oven, it works. Now, again, we are kind of a bit of a jumbled mess here, but again, it's, it's, it's kind of function over form sometimes. It's, it doesn't have to look pretty your kitchen. You just want to be able to make it function. So if you look at our earnings, meat soup 27, which that's a lot for meat soup. But again, we served that many portions plus that extra coin, breakfast 60, ice cream 12, booking desk 36 as we rang, I think we rang about uh, four times, table bonuses and your player count bonus. Now, if you're playing solo, your player count bonus will always be very high. If you're playing a duo, it'll be less. And then anything above that will be, I think pretty much zero because you have that, you have more people playing. So why should you get bonus? The bonus of the player count, the whole purpose of that is to allow you to be able to buy more items that would help you out playing in a solo game. All right, we're gonna lay another coffee table out. And as you see, each one of them have a plant buff to them. The plant radius goes two tiles in each direction. So one tile, two tile in each direction. It hits every table that we have. So we actually have one plant that's buffing six tables, which is great, by the way. And that gives you an extra 10% patience. Okay, so we basically have everything. I'm gonna buy a floor protector, I think. And I'm gonna put the floor protector right about here. And I'm gonna swap the safety hob out actually for the danger hob because a danger hob is really, really good for soup because it's that much faster. It's as fast as the oven is, but it's still, we're using the oven for other things. And I guess we could probably put a counter in here, maybe try to get another freezer or something like that. But anyway, that's pretty much the extent of how I would do intermediate automation here. The only step you could go from here would be to have a smart grabber system to pull this like this to, to do the dishes, but that's a little bit advanced for this guide. But here you go. So we're going to, we have two more days. It's basically the same days as this to get to the franchise. And then once we get to that, I'll come back and we'll wrap it up. And happy franchise, everyone. All right, this is a pretty easy run. We have a couple customer cards, a couple food cards. We have a bunch of coffee tables. And I mean, this is on a medium map. Not too much difficulty here. Again, I have those extra grabbers, extra hobs that I ended up doing nothing with. I like to buy them just to store them, just in case I get something like chips, roasted potatoes, but I didn't get any of those sides. Uh, so we were quite lucky. We didn't get beans, we didn't get toppings. We got soup, soup's pretty easy. Now we have our franchise car. Of course, we have high-tech suppliers. Shop blueprints have 25% to be upgraded, plus 30% customers that's a pretty good that's a pretty strong card because you could get things like freezers frozen prep stations dishwashers literally real early but the thing is that you need to have um or excuse me you don't need to have research for this these are the ones that drop at the end of the day that could be researched um these don't aren't the ones that spawn on the blueprint desk itself that is a different card the shop blueprints are the ones that pop up at the end of every day now we have double homework this is where the blueprint desk comes into play. Blueprint desk grant an extra copy. Now, not for free, but two copies. So again, these are both really strong cards, but the second one, you need to actually have a blueprint desk. If you do that, you're actually gonna end up getting six blueprints at the end of each day. Well, normally you get five. 
and then one of the ones on your blueprint desk would be one of the five but here you're going to get two so you have two of the same thing so that's really strong if you're planning on doing an automation run to get things like two conveyors two mixers two hobs two sinks like things that you really need for automation even things like two counters or two tables would be great if you but again again if you don't have a blueprint desk this card does nothing for you and you typically don't get a blueprint desk at least until day three or four depending on how your research is going so it's a bit of a toss-up there but again in the long run if you're planning to have a long maybe automated run or tiered run again this works for your tiers as well your tiered runs this may be a strong card but for me i think i would probably i don't know i don't know which one i would take it's very if we're doing this franchise here as is going to the future i probably would take um i probably would take blueprint desk grant an extra copy because i'll try to get a blueprint desk right away and the upgraded ones aren't as big a deal and there we go that's it that's how we franchise now i skipped around a bit but um hopefully this helps you guys out a bit as far as a little bit more intermediate things if there, obviously if there's any questions feel free to leave them down in the comments we covered tables we covered how the appliances cycle a little bit and earlier in the videos you had a couple pop-ups of some of my of the customer cards versus food cards versus my favorite cards so we went we went over that earlier in in the video and i think that's pretty much it we talked about we talked about themes talked about researching about how certain things can be researched multiple times um similar to the uh upgrade cycles basically your hobs can be researched one time your mixers can, are indefinitely because they'll keep cycling your grabbers will upgrade from a conveyor to a grabber to either a smart or a corner grabber and then that will continue to cycle between the two of them uh there's certain things like hobs don't cycle right now so that's one thing you can't cycle depending on what you get is what you get workstations freezers don't cycle so there's a lot of things in the game that don't cycle with each other which it's set up that way at the time of the recording like this on purpose and that's pretty much it so i want to thank you guys once again for joining me it's been it's been very very fun uh, it's been a fun video to make for you guys. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope it helped all you beginners and intermediate players out there. Stay tuned for the advanced guide. I'm once again the Ontario Gardener. You can find me on Twitch as well as on YouTube in the links below or search for the Ontario Gardener as well as on the Played Up Discord where I am a support team member and as well as a moderator on that Discord channel. Thank you once again and I'll see you next time.